are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome to Property Question Time. I'm Stephen Galpin and this is the show where you can have your property related questions answered by our team of experts and what experts we've got today. Hayley Andrews, welcome to you. Investor, you. mentor, founder of Your Freedom Empire. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. How was your trip down today? <laughs> Awful. Stressful. <laughs> very stressful. John Howard, developer, investor, author and property TV panellist. How are you, John? I'm very well, thank you, Stephen. Good. On form today? On form. Easy journey down. Only an hour from Ipswich. Less than an hour. Good. Then we'll have no trouble. Property prices are very low in Ipswich. All right. Well, we'll have no trouble with the questions then, will we? Yeah, right. Great place to relocate to. John, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the unconventional thing and start with you okay. first. Okay. All right. With the current economic difficulties affecting most industry costs, do the panel think it would be acceptable for planning authorities to relax the many green requirements associated with new development projects, thereby reducing the overall building costs? Well, it's, that's a very interesting point. And... Um, I was, I was speaking at a university recently and I was asked about sustainability. And I did say that I've just bought an electric car, which seemed to quite impress them on a sustainability. But other, what they meant was, of course, you know, what happens with these local authorities? Because actually, as a developer, we all need to be responsible for the environment. However, we are forced to be very, very responsible by the local authorities these days. There's lots of things that are in the planning um, agreements that you have to do now and so much so that it is costing more and more to develop property. So I think when things are tough, um, just like the government are looking to reopen some of the gas fields and oil fields, I think there needs to be, uh, in my view, um, a lessening of these requirements. I agree. I know in the long term we need them. Of course we need them. We under, all understand we need them, don't we? But in the short term, you know, it's going to be very, very tough for developers. Very tough. If you're um, an investor looking to retain property long term, I don't think there's going to be too many problems. But for developers where build costs have, have, have gone through the roof and at the moment people have masked that problem with the prices going up, pro rata really, but that's going to stop now. You know, property prices in the next 18 months aren't going to go up. And uh, there's so much cost involved in developing these days, especially with these green policies. I think they should do. Will they do so? I doubt it. But John, I, um, I'll let Hayley have a go in a minute. But, I, you know, I've got two points here. I did development down the road here. They made us put in two biomass boilers at a million and a half quid each as, as reserve boilers. Yeah. Then, of course, once that was all done, they realised that where do you store all the biomass fuel? Because wood chip is essentially yeah. flammable yeah. and dangerous in oh, a huge residential building. Even more building. so now with yeah. what's happened with Grenfell and yeah. so on. So I'm, I'm just very concerned that the people that are driving this sort of green requirement, um, I'm, I'm not altogether sure they know what they're doing. No. I really don't. And then I... Forgive me if I got the figures wrong, but I, I think I read somewhere it was something like 20 or something percent on, on your electricity bill that goes to a, yes. a green fund. Yes, a green levy. Yeah. Right. Is it going to a green levy or is it just going into the government coffers? I well, don't know. It, it's just another... It's is another it green tax. It's another green... It's a green tax, yeah. isn't it? Mm. So I, I'm, I'm really not sure. And I think in today's economic world, I just think we need to be flexible and I think we I need think to be sensible more, and I don't think sensible. we need to get hung up on... Mm on we actually agree over enthusiastic policies hmm. well we don't disagree much do we no. <laughs> hey every time every episode <laughs> um, no i completely agree with you guys there's there's a line of course we've got to look at reducing our carbon footprint and making sure. you know the world a greener place but um, you've got to look at investment opportunity as mm. well and uh, of course that's diminishing with prices you know mm. of of materials just soaring and uh, and as John said you have been able to kind of counter that mm -hmm. uh, with the rise in uh, obviously sale prices as well mm -hmm. um, but um, that is going to slow down and it is going to affect um, development and mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to look 
at a different way of construction, you know, different materials, quicker yeah. builds, uh, you well, know, course, be creative, yeah. they, they get in line with yeah. some other countries in the, Europe. The, yeah, the government are trying to do that. Yeah. But of course, every alternative is more expensive than bricks and mortar. That's the truth at the moment. It really is. But then it may be actually quicker to build as it's, a result. It is quicker and to build. So, it, it, you know, time is money. Mm. So yeah. in actual fact, while it may cost you a little bit more from, you know, yes. delivery materials, things like that, importing, all of those types of stuff, it will actually save you money in the long run because mm. the project will be completed well, quicker. And yeah. so there's a balance. There, um, there is a balance. And I know and that it's a hard, hard task, actually. It is. And, and yeah. the government are very keen uh, to to allow you know to open up the market if you like to more of these eco type houses yeah. and so on but at the moment they're just they're expensive. but the lenders are not particularly and on the board. lenders aren't really on um, board. So, again, you, you right. know, yeah. down here in Docklands when, when the first development started down here it, there was such a you know hooray about it you know they were going to encourage self-build Mm -hmm. Well, that was super till it all went wrong. Always till nobody wrong. could get a mortgage to, 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 to well, they're buy. they're doing that you know. now. Again, not I mean, they? yeah, they're very yeah, keen yeah. on very, yeah, the government yeah. are really keen on self build. But if you've got a self build of five houses and you get on with your house and the next per, the next door neighbour doesn't, doesn't. They, they've got yeah. a caravan sat there for yeah. five years. It's going to be detrimental to the value of your home that you've done yeah. and 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 how you live and your enjoyment of, of your home. So John, it's very you, difficult. John, you're 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 politically connected. I mean, the fact that we have had. I think 20 housing ministers since um, 1999, I think it mm. is. Um, one a year, basically. It's one a year, isn't mm. it? Are, are we ever going to get any consistent and reasonable policies while we have such political changes? Well, I think that the, half the problem with that is not just, the, not, not just the fact that the housing ministers change, but of course the Secretary of State for Housing is very different, and there haven't been so many of those. Michael Gove's the current one. But I would, what I would say is that whatever planning policies they try and put in place, the local authorities and the MPs in those areas where they're saying, they, right, we're going to force you to build 3,000 homes, they are always anti it. The MPs are anti it in those areas because they know they'll lose votes at the election. They won't be in next time. So they stop all, all these things are stopped, really, by their own party. Mm. Uh, when it gets to, when it comes to a vote about it, they vote against it. Well, I think there difficult. should be more tax said, uh, tax benefits um, for you know making your homes greener and things like that. And yes. I think I think that needs to come into place for mm. landlords as well. You know, we're, we're I wondered what you were saying then, Heidi, because we got off the subject a bit, didn't we? Really, <laughs> so you just brought, Sorry, you brought, brought us back. You brought us, my, my brain's just <laughs> thinking about the overall kind of solution. Yeah. And, you brought, you yeah. brought us uh, straight I, back to it. Well yeah, done. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> landlords need support in order to put green policies in well, place. Everybody does, uh, and that's that, that's yeah. the you know that yeah. that's really the um, the point, isn't it? There yeah. needs to be more government support to help get to this kind yeah. of yeah. net zero and. But again, yeah. I think John's point, Hit you know, we, we, we've both had electric cars, but actually when you talk to people and they tell you that the energy used to make the batteries and the steel still the same or yeah. aluminium. It's just a different way. Just yeah. a different way of getting to the same yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. The energy's got to come from somewhere. All right. Yeah. OK, well, we'd better let Hayley have a question, hadn't we? <laughs> right, OK. We'll let, we'll let you take part, Hayley, don't worry. Right, some property publications are suggesting that for a number of reasons, including new government policies, the UK rental market is shrinking dramatically. Do the panel think that this will cause a significant rise in rental price levels, aggravating further the shortage of both availability of properties and indeed tenants able to afford private sector renting? Do you want the short answer or the long answer? <laughs> uh, you've got four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go in between then. Um, so yes, of course it will. You know, it's simple laws of uh, supply and demand. And uh, and actually, um, you know, since 2019 and, and actually pre, we have seen a decline in um, uh, private rental sector shrinking. Mm. So they're absolutely right, whoever set, sent the question in. And many landlords have uh, kind of thrown in the towel and, and just yes. sold while the prices are high, you know, got out, cashed up um, and invested elsewhere. When, you know, the incentives are removed and there's backlash constantly and changes all the time, that puts people... It puts fear in people and they don't like what they don't know. And there's been so many uncertainties over the last five or six years that many people have, have just thought, you know, what the reward actually doesn't, um, you know, 
It doesn't yeah. weigh up no. any longer. And so I don't blame them. They've had a hell of a lot of backlash over the last few years. I think COVID was kind of the last kind of straw for many people with the restrictions on evictions and things like that with tenants not paying rent for 12, 13, 18 months yeah, or yeah. even longer and yeah. you could do nothing about it. Yeah. Um, I think that while many people may say that landlords have had it easy for a really long time, mm -hmm. they've actually had a hard time over the last five years and uh, most certainly the last three. And I think most, you know, and we, as a result, not only do we have people selling up their portfolios and leaving the industry or placing their investment elsewhere, development, things like that, yeah. commercial, um, uh, they are, we also have less people coming in, which is just adding even mm. more stress mm. to local authority waiting lists, which is already astronomical. Um, I think this government has had a real issue with private sector landlords mm. and uh, it shows. And actually now landlords are saying, do you know what, you've made your bed, now lie in it. Yeah. They will see how yeah. easy we've has, I mean, there's, a, com landlords there's a couple it. of things here, Hayley, isn't there? I mean, if we go back to the late 80s, then Thatcher brought in um, the short, short old tenancies to give tenants a reasonable amount of security, but also the facility landlords for landlords well. to get yeah. their properties back if they require yeah. them. Um, because circumstances change, you may be able to let out a property for a number of years, but your circumstances change. Yeah, you may exactly, need it for yourself, yeah. your, your finances may not sort, <laughs> Freedom. you know. Yeah. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm just bewildered by the government's attitude now that they're bringing sort of penal um, tax supplements for landlords. Yeah. They are positively discouraging the smaller landlord. Yeah. And at the same time, they're saying, well, why isn't the more private letting available? Yeah, yeah, 10 years ago, they were encouraging this. And actually, you know, I think there's a misconception that landlords are wealthy or cash rich individuals yeah. and in actual fact that's not the truth you know in your world though maybe john um, oh blame me i well, would what well have in I your said? world what you may I have wrong? armchair investors that are just looking to park their capital somewhere mm. and appreciate over time in actual fact the majority of people with small portfolios mm. are working class people yeah. and they've actually Ambitious. scrimped and, sh mm -hmm. and scraped, uh, they've yeah. pulled the money together, yeah. they've sacrificed for the good of themselves, mm -hmm. their family and their own future I think it, I think to it, get above the breadline. Well, well, we sorry, we are missing one point here and that is that these buy-to-let landlords are taking away the opportunity for first time buyers. I don't think that they are. And I that's really what the government that's what the government believes. That's what they're selling. That's what they believe. On that's a what, high level. Yeah. That is not actually this the case right. of what can, I can see. I tell you, John, in, no. I, I, I disagree. I, I've been it's a long time and, and my view is I think Hayley's right. The type of landlord that is the wealthy landlord just trying to park their money can find a lot better things to do than be a residential landlord on a buy to let portfolio. Really can. Well, what I would but say. I'm going to have to stop you there because we need to go to the break. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, there we are. That's all we've got time for in this half of the show. So join me again after the break when uh, John and Haley will be answering more of your questions. You are watching Property TV. You are watching Property TV. Hello and welcome back to part two of Property Question Time with Hayley Andrews and John Howard. Welcome back, guys. Right, your second uh, questions are in fact both, I think, to do with um, government policies. Great. Uh, which we've been discussing in the break. <laughs> exactly. You know, in, in, we, in haven't, a... we haven't stopped, by the <laughs> way. We haven't stopped talking yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're watching an advert. We haven't stopped. We've carried so, on. So we're sorry, viewers. We'll let you know one day what we were saying. <laughs> what we were saying, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, um, John. Yes. Um, with what's claimed to be a newly invigorating government, what would the panel think could be done to accelerate the provision of much needed new housing stock right across the UK? Another massive question, isn't it, really? Um, you know, well, any... if you don't know, just so you don't know. Well, I, I, I think the, ar <laughs> the, the ar well, what I would, let's say, let's say what the, what they have done, because for, which is remarkable for a conservative government, they have allowed council, councils to build new homes now with taxpayers money with and, taxpayers money but no idea what they're doing <laughs> well to a point you're right but they have allowed that and for a conservative government to allow councils to build council houses is it's very it's a it, you know I, I never thought i'd ever see it happen 
On top of that, you've got the housing associations, which this government pumps millions and millions of pounds into housing associations through, um, you know, through the government fund, funding banks and so on. Um, you know, it, there's, they're throwing millions and millions and millions of pounds at, this pro at the projects and it's still not enough because so many people want to live in the UK. It's such a popular, wonderful country to live in. And I don't think realistically they'll ever get, on. no government will get on top of the demand. I don't think genuinely, honestly, I don't think they will. We need to build 500 houses every year in the UK, not 300, 500, just to keep up the current demand. That's not all the back demand that there's been as well. And, and it's just, I don't think it's possible. I honestly don't think there's enough labour to do it, there's not enough money to do it, and there's not enough materials to do it. Yet Very looking, difficult. Le, yet they're looking at a scheme to sell it off to people that are on benefits that will get a discount. Well, and... that's all to do with well, that's all to do with home ownership, which is at sixty four percent in the UK. But it was still, higher. They're still building those houses, though, yeah. aren't they? But, but ho and yeah, they but, can't replace the but ones. But do these do these government ministers un understand anything about no, life? Absolutely because nothing. You know, let, let's just they're, just they're very just, bright individuals. Let's, let's, no... let's just look at the proposition you you just talked about. You're going to let people on universal credit have a mortgage and buy a home. Great stuff. So but, when they need their five percent deposit, even at the rate of you know the standard house cost these days, they're probably going to need what ten fifteen thousand pounds savings, right? Now if they've managed to survive well to actually build up a, a, a savings bank of 10 to 15 thousand pounds on universal credit well quite frankly they can't they, have universal credit well, of 15 a, they can't have it but p you know universal credit's paying them too much yeah, but, isn't but, it but, if, they, well, if they've but, got that kind of surplus i think that might be the case you know this <laughs> you is know. what i was saying earlier the this government seems to be rewarding those that have sat on their bottom and punishing those that have got up yeah. and done something to yeah. improve well, their financial I, I situation. Think, I think we have to bring it back to the fact that the government, Homes England is the government bank and Homes England has set aside billions of pounds to invest into housing in the UK for private developers. I borrowed 15, 20 million pounds off them. Other developers are doing the same and more, as well as they're lending it to housing associations and local authorities. So they are doing a hell of a lot, yeah. this government, to try to, to, to sort the problem out. The fact is, the problem is too big to sort out, in my view. That's the problem. I'll tell you what I think. I, think. I don't think the problem is too big. I think with a balanced view, looking right across the market, balancing out the different sectors. Look, not everybody these days wants to buy a house. No. A lot of people are quite satisfied to rent. While we have movement of labour around the country, they're trying to level up around the country, yeah. you, you need flexibility. The last thing you need to do is buy a house in London and then find yourself going to work in Manchester. I mean, it's stupid. You know, it is so a different lifestyle choice now. It's um, totally different. Yeah. And we may, we may or may not be falling into the sort of European, European yeah, ethos I see that. of, you know, no, I don't need to. But to. in Europe, you can get a 50 year mortgage. You, it's well, hard to do yeah. that here, for instance. Yeah. And they passed on through generations. Yeah. But I, th so, I think things like that, mortgages that you can pass down to a, yeah. to a, 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 a lower generation, be great. I, yeah. I, I don't see what the problem is, you know. It's a bit like if you buy a car on higher purchase or whatever, they, they don't really care much about you because the asset's sitting there and, yeah. and all right. Yeah. Every, every month you pay a bit off, it's, yeah. it's safer for them, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't see yeah. why that can't apply to housing. No. But I, I just think it, ne it needs people who understand what life is really about. I, I agree. And the problem, with every, the problem is with, with, with every government, uh, every politician normally is they're very bright, but they go, these days they've got no life experience. They're, they're professional politicians from the age of 25. Yeah. And that is a major well, problem for any government. And they're yeah. looking at headlines and they're looking at sure, getting they're, votes they're instead of really votes. just looking at the issue and solving the problem. Yeah. And that's the issue, yeah. I, I mean, think. I mean, if you remember some of the government criticism a few months ago, they were saying what Johnson has done in, in Downing Street is, is to bring in a lot of 21, 22 year old political advisors. Yep. Policy advice. Who they pay very little money to, yeah. if any. And, 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 and frankly, what life experience have they None got? None at all. None at all. But these are the guys that are being listened to. Mm. Don't know. Difficult one.
but I don't think... Well, it's not really that difficult, We've it, sorted it out, haven't we? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> then okay. the power's not in our hands. <laughs> well, sadly. Now, look, Hayley, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question now that somebody's written in, but um, I have to say, reading the newspapers this morning, the, the question has been almost preempted. But I think it does, it, it, it's worth the conversation because it brings in a sort of wider scope to the question. What do the panel think the government's suggestion that pets must be allowed in all rented properties? And what, what can I do if my potential landlord refuses permission for me to have a pet? Well, um, I, I saw in the newspapers this morning, Mr. Gove is announcing in Parliament that he is bringing in um, compulsory permission for, for pets. Um, along with one or two other things, no, no, no fault um, possessions and things like that. But I think this business of pets and dictating again to landlords what they can and can't do with their property is a difficult one. It is a difficult one. And I think the original approach with the modern tenancy, um, uh, the government's new model tenancy, model sorry, tenancy, that's, yes. the, that's the name, um, was the right approach. It, it was it was almost encouraging the landlord. It was good practice, and it was still giving you a choice, and uh, basically asking you to accept pets unless there was a, a reasonable ground to refuse. So it kind of still left the conversation between the landlord and the tenant. There was checks that would be carried out on the tenant to make sure that they were responsible, the property was fit for a pet, um, and uh, that you know it. it the lease didn't restrict the pet from being there. There's loads of different reasons why, you, you know, for HMOs, for example, you can't have five dogs in a five bed HMO, mm -hmm. you know? So these are things that really need to be looked at. There's, there's some properties that are not fit for pets. You've also got to look at not only the building itself, you've got to look at the wealth fair of the animals. Mm. I mean, as you were saying in the break, um, Stephen, you know, you live in a, a glass Pent box yeah. you know it, your your Stop apartment it. as beautiful and, and yeah. massive as it is wouldn't you know wouldn't be fit for an animal would it no right. so no, you know no. i think the, the welfare of the animals need to be looked at and sure. instead of just dictating all the time and i think i think as a buy to let landlord i i'm getting a little bit tired of it well, I mean, the, the government's argument on this is, oh, it's not a problem. I mean, this was Gove. Um, it's not a problem. A landlord can take out insurance to cover any damage by the It's not just about and it's insuring not just the about property. That. It's about the, and, and, about the other residents as then, well in the block. Exactly. And then se secondly, um, Hayley, you have to forgive me. It's a long time since I got involved in any rentals. But um, I, am I not right to think that there's a limit to how much deposit? Yes, there is. You can take. Yeah. You see, Gove again is saying, oh, you just take a bigger rental you deposit. Can, well, then they need to write to. that back into, <laughs> into to, because <laughs> because that was taken away, you know, yeah. with a tenant fee ban and things. Yeah like that so you 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 can take out insurance a pet policy to cover your property in the event that a pet or a tenant's pet damages the property but you can't charge that back to the landlord currently as it stands you can within your ast um, you can refuse as long as you're not being unreasonable and you give reasons you know a, a reasonable excuse well, they, 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 of why i mean i don't think excuse is quite the right word i actually yeah. allow pets in my properties outside of hmos and the I reason don't. i do is because i do have pet policies in place i'm insured um and uh landlords with pets do tend to stay longer so it reduces void periods and things like that yeah. um so I take out the insurance, but of course I used to pass that cost across to the tenants as well. I can't do that anymore. No. It's it's a business choice to still protect my asset. Yeah. Mental, but, mental I mean, health's I got something to do with it as well. I, I think huh? I think Go's decision is also to do with mental health because I think if you people have a pet, there's, there's, there's no there's, that that was something. That and was I can't brought, believe I'm saying that that, that, that was fair, brought up, that was brought up in COVID, wasn't it? When, when people think, were well, contained in their you flats. You but my dog, Mabel, helps me to relax. I go for long walks with her, talk to her. <laughs> um, it's all about de-stressing. And, and actually, you know, I can't believe I'm saying this particularly. I but, can't believe you're but saying actually, this. <laughs> but actually, I think there is, a, there is a case to say, if you have an animal and he's looking after, you've got yeah. more responsibility. Uh, no, there's, there is, there's, there is, there is something to be said I, for I'm, that. I'm, you know, pro-pets. I love yeah. animals. I've there's got something a dog. to be said for that. I just don't want, I don't really want my tenants to have any. 
But, <laughs> but you I'm see, I, Hayley, the final question that I've got on this is, is this. I mean, I live in a, a block of flats across the road there. And um, I don't think I'm even allowed to have a goldfish in a bowl, actually. Without permission. Um, no, it doesn't at say all. without pets. No all. pets on the lease. No leaves. pets yeah. at all of any kind. Well, this is what. Right. So if they bring this into and in its law, mm. then right. So that's my question. Yeah. Which takes priority? My my head lease that stops head... me having the pet, or the government legislation that says. Well, it's, it won't be And if you can question one it? and override it, can we then question everything, everything can override it? Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's I, getting I would a, say it won't be irrespective. Bit. It will be going forward. I mean, John, you know, I, 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 can, I think this is just so, so, so basic because, yeah. you know, if the block of flats you want to go in doesn't accept pets, well, go and live somewhere else then. Go and live somewhere that does. And, I, and it is I, for I, the I benefit of the benefit of all the residents as well in yes, the block, absolutely. to be fair. You've got to remember, I, not I, just about the landlord. I, I'm, I'm just going to go back on something I said a million times before. You know, when you're renting, you know, your landlord produces a lease, so he's happy with it. You're given the lease, you read it, you're happy with it, you sign it up. So why don't you just both do what it says and stick to it? It's as simple as that, isn't it? It really is. That so simple. there we are. Anyway, that's all we've got time for today. So, Hayley Andrews, John Hud, thank you so much for both coming in today. <laughs> Lively conversation as ever, but good advice too. So I'm Stephen Galpin. Join me again next time on Property Question Time. Look forward to seeing you there.